person on one of my videos here this earlier this week left this comment and the, the video itself was about how searching out many different sources of information often is a way it's either a subconscious or an unconscious way for us to just avoid doing the things we, we just got to hunker down and do. Um, but the person wrote this comment. He says, the problem is you're not 100% accurate or correct. So other information is necessary to get a more accurate picture. And I replied, okay, you tell me the things I'm not 100% accurate about. And this will tell me if you're not confusing your own failure to see and understand as being things that I'm wrong about. You know, that's, uh, I've been doing this for about four years now, and every time that, that is the problem. The person say, you're wrong about this. And I'll say, okay. Well, I know I'm not wrong about that. So the, uh, there's, another, there's another explanation, though, another very reasonable explanation. And the reasonable explanation is that you're just not getting it. You know, think about that. How often do you jump to that conclusion? This person is absolutely wrong, when in reality, you're, you're just not seeing what they're trying to explain. You're not getting it, you know. He says, your audience is way bigger than just BPD people. Well, you know, i got to make a correction there. I can't let that stand unchallenged. There is no such thing as BPD people. There's no such thing. There are people, and there are people who have borderline personality disorder, but they're still people. They're not some new category of person. So there's no such thing as BPD people. He goes on to say, for example, where you are inaccurate. In your work about capacity versus ability, your neglect and torture, people are capable of things, but in some cases only if they torture themselves in order to achieve this. So people might be capable of doing certain things, but it's not always healthy to achieve those things. As an example, me with my autism, he says I could torture myself all the time in order to behave like I would not have autism. Therefore, I am capable of behaving normal, but forcing myself to do it would be unhealthy. This shows that you not only need to take a look at what people are capable of, but also how much torture they need to be able to live up to their capabilities. Well, I appreciate the comment, but there's a few corrections I'd like to make. In the comment, he says, people might be capable of doing certain things, but only if they torture themselves in order to achieve this. Then he goes on to describe something that is very similar to the reality that I once lived, to the reality I watched my father live. And that is, let's just take temper, for example, right? Anger. The attempt to try to white knuckle, prevent yourself from uh, mistreating others with anger, to try to hold yourself back from verbally abusing people. Now, here's what the the person who left the comment is completely failing to acknowledge in my work just because you are capable of not verbally abusing somebody does not mean that then the answer is for you to just resist doing it that's not the answer that's never been the answer that I've that's never been my approach it wasn't my approach in my own case and it's never been my advice for anybody else what has been my advice? My advice has been, you have the capability not to do it, but you still have to figure out why you're doing it in the first place. It's not just a matter of not doing it. You have to get down to the, the fundamental causes of what is making you do that. I don't just talk about capacity versus ability and then say, well, because you're capable of it, just from sheer will, you've got to do what you're capable of. No, there's more to it than that. He's failing to factor in that another imperative component of my work is addressing underlying causes rather than these superficial white-knuckle approaches. So when you combine the two things, capacity versus ability, 
and everything that I've taught you about that, and you combine that with getting down to the fundamental causes of things rather than superficial approaches, then I'm not wrong. He's just not factoring in the entirety of the thing that I'm presenting as a, a finished puzzle. He's just isolating one part of what I teach and saying that it doesn't apply or, or you're getting it wrong. I have the capacity, everybody does, to not be abusive to those I care about. But what if it's agonizing for me, this torture that he's describing, you know, he's not speaking about literal torture, he's, he's talking about the, an intense difficulty in resisting a certain uh, tendency. According to my work, the last symptom, and maybe I haven't communicated it well enough. So th that's a possibility, that I haven't communicated it well enough. But if it's torture for you to resist a certain behavior or to avoid a certain thing, um, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. See, if I'm just holding back frustration and anger around my daughter, even if I'm real successful at it a lot of the time, but if I'm holding it back like I've got my back to the door and I'm trying to keep a velociraptor from coming in and uh. I'm constantly like holding that, that pressure back against that door, I'm doing it the wrong way. That's a failed and pointless approach. Just recognizing your capacity for a thing is not enough. Think about this. I fully recognize my capacity to speak German. I possess that capacity. Do you, do you folks remember what the difference is between capacity and ability? Capacity is an inherent possibility that exists within you. So I have the capacity to speak German. I don't have the ability. Why don't I have the ability to speak German? Because I have not learned. I've not shown an interest in it. I've not put in the work. So there's a perfect example of where just me recognizing that I have the capacity to speak German does not help me speak German. Really what this person is kind of insinuating, uh, without really thinking it through, I believe, is that just because I recognize that I have the capacity to speak German, now just by, through sheer will, I should be able to force myself to do it. No, not without learning German, <laughs> not without sitting down, memorizing words, learning the grammar, and practice. Those things are still required. Me recognizing my capacity for that thing is not enough in and of itself. So if you think about it in reverse, me recognizing or accepting that I have the capacity, and it's true, I do and everybody else does. The only exception is if you have a mental illness, a literal mental illness where your mental faculties are malfunctioning. They are not operating the way they're meant to. That is the only exception that I can think of. But everybody has the capacity to treat, to not mistreat people. You know, this is the reverse of what we were saying uh, just a second ago with the German. The reverse being that uh, instead of doing a thing because we recognize we have the capacity for it, in this case we're talking about resisting doing a thing because we have the capacity to not do that thing. We have the capacity to not mistreat people. But is it enough for me to just say, well, I have the capacity. I have the capacity not to mistreat people. No, they, just like the German where you got to sit down and put in the work, just like that with not mistreating people, there's work to do. And that work is, why am I mistreating people in the first place? Yeah, that's the start. To not be abusive to those I care about, I have to honestly identify the underlying causes for the underlying frustration and anger that I live with and address that. The idea is to address true underlying causes so that you don't then have to white knuckle anything. The last symptom, my focus here with the last symptom is on creating conditions so that natural behaviors are able to happen naturally and that old behaviors fade away and, and die. They go away naturally. A person is, doesn't have to force himself not to mistreat others. He just doesn't mistreat others as a naturally occurring result of new perspectives and new attitudes. 
anytime you're white knuckling a thing or you know it's requiring tremendous restraint or torture uh, like this person describes um, that's just an example of going through motions you're just going through motions you're going through motion, the motions of fake and forced behaviors 